so yesterday uh, we have started uh, this documentation okay so from there on i just uh, put something here in the app component we have certain variables and i put certain css into the app component style dot css and uh, now if you go into the browser you can see this output over here today we will start the rest of the things okay. so the summary that uh, am i audible yes 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 yes, yes. yes. okay the summary that uh, comes from this particular output over here is uh, we have just created a simple project from the angular cli then we put certain things in our component file and certain stuffs in our css file and we are able to see the output over here okay so actually my there are too many screens right now open that's why so in today uh, we will go into that next part we will generate a new component okay so this is the new component command to generate i am creating another terminal yesterday i didn't share this document because uh, we just started yesterday so today i will definitely share this document with you so in this example what we are going to do we will create a component okay so once we create a component it will create all stuffs inside that by default it will create a selector template url style url and then we will try to add certain properties into that ts file and we will show that information into the template variable okay so it is created this is the hero component now let me close this thing we do not need right now so this is our hero component dot ts file you can see that that selector is here and by default they have added one life cycle hook this is a life cycle hook i will explain this life cycle hook in a separate class okay when we reach to that level so this is an interface available into the angular angular has couple of life cycle hook by default we will get two things when we create any component one is the constructor and second is the ng on so when we go through the life cycle hook classes uh, then we will explain how these life cycle hook actually work which one is the first one that actually, actually renders and then which one so by default constructor renders first then ng on init renders okay so 
into that life cycle hook uh we need to add uh in hero component dot ts file we need to add a certain property just like in title variable okay so we are adding certain things over here and next we will in the html file we have to transfer this variable into the html file so i will remove this thing and i am putting this variable so this what is this i yesterday we discussed about this thing what is this called interpolation this is interpolation yes okay now we do not have any routing in our project so far so far our uh, parent is the app component and we do not have any routing to show different different component right now so to show this particular stuff we have to put this selector into our app component.html file in the app component.html file if i paste it that otherwise we cannot view this data okay the data we are coming from here we cannot view this thing so you can see that this data is up. since we do not have any routing separately so what we have done we create one new component we put certain variable into our ts file we transfer that value into that respective html file and now we add this component to render into that app component.html file because this app component.html file is the mother of all files we do not have any uh, separate thing right now okay so this is simple i think whatever we have done this is simple right now yesterday we talk about model we talk about mvc structure so what is the model so for this thing we have to create uh, one ts file that is called hero.ts file why we need model so into that app new file hero.ts file to that hero.ts file because i have given you whole path so that when you practice there will be no issue with that in your own project what happen with this model this model will be used to validate your data okay so data will be coming from database say a table a customer table we have a customer table has maybe 5 6 columns over there so you have to define your interface or model to validate that data okay sometimes what happen that you uh, actually sending certain post or get request into that table right so the data you are sending back to api that should match with this model so that you can validate it, that thing sometimes what happen that after inserting data into table back end api is sending us certain responses so those responses also needs to be validated so we can create a interface and we can validate those things so gradually you will get to see how we are using these models or interface okay so model and interface is like that we are using this key thing interface and then we create our model we define our properties over there these properties will be like the attributes and we export this thing okay now yes anyone has any question yes hi subhadra so yes. the 
interface that you created will mm -hmm. that be accessible across modules or in the module in which it was defined uh, no i didn't i didn't put it under any module i am putting this uh, interface inside app okay and i am exporting this particular module so you can access anywhere So right now we will again go back to our heroes component of ts5 okay. this is our html file this is our ts5 so in this ts file you can see that whenever you create component this particular stuff is automatically get imported okay now we have to import the this hero model from there since we do not use this thing so it is it remains uh, in that way once we start using this thing then it will be automatically there so right now now we are going to use this thing we will copy this thing and we will put it anywhere you can put now we have to that is an error because same name earlier we are using as a variable right now we are getting it from a model okay so that model has two attributes one is id another is the name so we have to comment out the second one so right now we are going into that model driven approach and into our hero component.html file we will change certain things because earlier we will directly accessing this particular stuff right now we will access from the model with the certain properties you need to save this thing you can see both id and name so what is the difference between previous thing and the this new thing so we use one model using this model we are passing certain value we import this model we are setting certain values and now into that view page we are getting certain value into that html page So anyone has any question about this thing or you understand what i have done it is clear yeah, subrata that means yeah yeah it is overwriting the value right it static with the uh, using the model right yes because because it will help us to handle data in a proper manner okay in your approach if you have a single variable then you do not need to create that model structure okay but in okay. general what happens in our project we have to deal with things right we have to deal with insert update delete select queries okay so the data we are fetching from the api that needs to be validated like customer name email address phone number a b c d things okay so these are these, these will be not a single variable this will be an array or this will be an object so that object needs to pass to that model so that if that model doesn't have certain property say for example tomorrow in initially you have created one table with five column and maybe after four five days you added few columns over there then if you are following this model structure then application will throw error and people people if people visit this model they will get to know about what object you are actually pulling from the table uh, so this is very similar to how we use models in laravel for multiple same data types thing. same thing same yeah. thing yeah we are just importing it into the file that we require and then we are fetching it inside the main html file with those properties id and yes. name yes using interpolation technique yes
is there any naming convention should you use naming convention means uh, the file naming like the hero.ts the hero dot uh, .ts. generally what happen if there is a complicated name then we follow camel casing okay and whatever interface or model we declare the first character should be capital okay and the attributes we declare it will follow the camel case say for example first underscore name last underscore name something like that will follow in that way okay <clears throat> now uh, you can see first you just observe this output so this is the name coming from here right now we will introduce a small thing into our uh, heroes component.html file we will use an uppercase what is this uppercase this uppercase is a pipe pipeline yeah this is an inbuilt pipe we have in our angular okay so the name we are actually passing So it will be automatically capitalized. Okay, so it will capitalize all the characters. The same pipe probably you are using, uh, I think, in different different uh, framework like .NET and PHP have different stuffs. But this uppercase is an inbuilt pipe. We will we will discuss about pipe in later stage. But Angular has couple of uh, inbuilt pipes like uppercase, lowercase, date, currency. So we don't need to develop our own custom pipe over there. We can use those pipe in our application. At the same time, we can develop a search related pipe, custom pipe uh, to filter out data. Yeah, anyone asking any question? Yeah, I have a question. So like in PHP, uh, we are we are calling it as function, right? So in uh, Angular, is it called as a pipe? Yes, I mean, uh, in Laravel, probably you have a lot of uh, things up there, right? So if you use those things in your data, then uh, it will automatically uh, change the uppercase or lowercase, something like that. In yeah, Angular, call, the, yeah. same thing, yeah. Same yeah. thing we are calling here in the pipe. Okay. But uh, don't we have an uppercase even in Angular, when a different function, like instead of the pipe here, so this is a piping uppercase part. Like, yeah so what is what is the pipe basically pipe the concept of pipe is pipe basically runs over the data that is you are actually rendering okay, okay. so so probably say for example you are running through a loop say you have an array array of employees okay and uh, certainly there is a phone number and phone number you are getting from the database is a simple 10 digit fed phone number now client has requested i need to format this phone number in a three by three by four format okay, okay. and in between in between three by three by type we need to have a hyphen yes yellow over there then in that case you you just create a custom pipe okay and then this custom pipe what happens when this custom pipe renders it will automatically look through all the you need to mention which column you want to apply that pipe so i will apply it over here hero.name i didn't apply it in the id okay mm, yes so it will automatically this is an inbuilt pipe angular is providing so in your case you have to develop a custom pipe that will automatically look through that phone number that you are actually rendering it will automatically convert it that 10 digit number into 3 by 3 by 4. So, so where can I keep that uh, pipe and a custom pipe? So, custom pipe in there are two ways. Okay, you can create one pipe folder under inside app, 
okay inside app mm -hmm. you can create a pipe folder and you can put all your pipe inside that pipe that is one one structure or sometimes uh, this is always preferable because it may happen that whatever pipe you have created for your own purposes that pipe may be used by another person in his component right so mm -hmm. it should be always better to put a pipe in a generic position so from where everyone can access okay. yeah anyone has any question yes sir so subrata consider a situation where i have a form which has mm -hmm. first name last name middle name etc uh, mm -hmm. can i apply the for example upper case uh, pipe on entire object and then print it uh, in the upper case or i will have to apply it one by one on each property so entire object means for example if i have object which has name first no, name last name no 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 so on each individual pipe, property pipe will pipe will only work on individual properties it never applied over any any object on an on any array okay so pro, of the of one property i told you that is the phone number so your pipe should be attached with the phone number and pipe should be always in the part of the html page it should not be there in the ps file so whenever you apply any pipe that pipe should be in the view page okay and uh, see uh, pipe performs very uh, basic uh, operations right like upper case or you can transform your date or uh, etc so why should we use pipe instead of creating a function see in creating a function what will happen that if you create a function this function will not going to trigger so when you when you develop any pipe so angular gives us certain flexibility that when your data is getting rendered into inside a loop okay that time that pipe will automatically catch that particular column okay thanks okay. okay so in angular we have couple of things like so far whatever you have seen in this particular example we are putting certain values into our ts file we are rendering those things in the html this is a one way binding so angular has flexibility of both one way and two way bindings okay so i am giving an example of the two way binding it's it's given error in the uh, page it is showing that template of the component hero component failed to compile okay that hero dot name okay. so where is where is this this hero dot name coming from okay so it is not able to identify this thing event is not assigned to type string so this is the reason this is the reason because uh, we are using uh, this ng model comes in the forms module okay so this ng model lives here i have given this particular error because this ng model lives in the angular forms module so we need to you need to import this thing the app module dot ts file and you have to put this forms module in the import section
so you can see that it compiles successfully so now what is this two way binding so far whatever we are doing let's go back to there here is this ng model what is this ng model does ng model directly communicate between view page and the ts file so we have certain value in the hero dot name that is wisdom so we have planted this value into our ng model so ng model is rendering this value in the wisdom now if i change something you can see all the upper values are also getting changed because from this text box we are handling two way binding so what is two way binding two way binding means both communication i mean view to mod view to ts and ts to view so if i am updating this information in the view at the same time my core value in the ts file also getting updated any question hi so great mm -hmm. uh, so uh, what is the ng model here means uh, we have to uh, write uh, these are uh, we can write anything means no it... ng model is a given uh, syntax from angular side we cannot write anything the way it has been done over here we have to put it over here and ng model basically binds models or attributes from view to ts and ts to view okay so always uh, when we need to uh, like do something like like uh, to move the like data from ts file to html file so always we have to use the ng model no no not like that mm -hmm. not like that so this ng model specifically we use because angular has two types of forms okay one is the template driven form mm -hmm. another is the reactive form okay. so so generally for login registration we use template driven form this template driven form only has the luxury to deal the data with ng model when we create reactive forms then entire business logic of the form go go into the ts file so this ng model gives us to communicate ts data from the view page and this is not a i mean uh, what i can say that frequent practice over there so in some cases like search uh, if you have couple of uh, search uh, fields over there and you have to deal with the um, data that you have in the view page okay that time those search fields we you have to put it inside your template driven form and you need to assign ng model so that whenever people make any changes or put any data for the search automatically that data can communicate back with the ts file to filter your records so okay. real life scenario example is there yes yeah actually in angular like how we render when it render how it understand like it's a text box it means ng model is it kind of like engine so that it can uh, make understand browser it is the like uh, text box like that suppose we write that the ng models uh, in html what we can kind type it text okay that means the text box so you yeah. write just like ng models name and it makes it the text box how it transition is there so Hello. i put ng model yes into a, inside a text box right yes this text box can be part of any form whatever it is and you have multiple text boxes so this ng model can be attached with a text box can be attached with a radio button can be attached with a check box drop down everywhere so whenever you want to send data from view back to your ts file that means your component file you have to use your ng model suppose uh, after the text box i need a one radio button then what need to be write like uh, id suppose it is the age 
uh, like anything whatever the variables then whatever what it is whatever it is if you have if you right now you have, we have a text box you you can have a drop down okay yeah. you can you can have a you can have a check box so you can put a certain ng model into that thing and you can assign certain property over there okay so this ng model basically communicate with this particular attribute into the model so you have mentioned that hero dot name so this name property we have inside the hero model so in your case you have a big big model over there big interface will be there so whatever attributes you want to assign with that check box maybe male female or whatever it is uh you can you can you can use that thing so this ng model basically communicating between view to ts ts to view so that's why whenever i making i am making any changes into that view page that is reflected into the ts file because i didn't bind this thing with the ng model right i just pull that data from my model here but whenever i making i am making any changes over here that change is getting reflected over here also so so far whatever we have covered so so far we have covered i mean uh, use cli to create our second component we displayed a uh, heroes component adding it to the app component shell you applied the upper case pipe to format the name you use two way binding because by default whatever you have seen that is a one way binding so we can, you have seen the two way binding and you learned little bit about app module that if you put certain data into that app module so that data is accessible all across the platform so i have added my forms module into that app module and now i am accessing into that heroes component so i can access it anywhere you imported forms module so that forms module i told you that it, uh, this ng model resides into inside the forms module and you learned importance of declaring components into that app module so whatever components we have created if you revisit your app module okay so you can see that i created heroes component from the cli command but this component is automatically getting added into the ng module declaration part okay so this is this is a beauty of the cli command you do not need to apply it manual manually if you create manually then you have to put it into this particular area otherwise uh, this particular component won't be accessible into your application okay so now i am going to create certain mock data okay so i will create a same thing uh in the mock heroes.ts file i will create over here into that source file so whatever i am doing over here i import hero hero model i have already created and uh, this data is the the mock data i am creating this is an array of objects each object is coming from hero model so this id and name property i have given into the hero model and this is my heroes these heroes basically holding the array of objects now i want to display this thing so whatever data i have added just think about you give an api call you receive this data right now i do not have any api so i am creating a mock data over here in heroes component i will import this thing
Is anyone feeling something? Let But uh, your voice is not coming. Mm -hmm. I'm there, I'm there. What mistake I'm making? I've taken this array. And now I'm putting this zero. Okay. <clears throat> That's the class.
Does the T rose root come in square bracket? Hmm. Which one? This one, square bracket, because it's a class, so ng on in it, T rose, T rose is given. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does it come in square bracket? Because it's a class. <laughs> No, 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 square bracket in inside square bracket, or we can assign a let, uh, let or a string to this if it work. No, 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 no. it won't work. Mm, not going okay. Zero component, I'm taking this heroes import. Mm -hmm. This is a heroes variable. And I'm iterating through that loop. This is the ID, this is the name. Variable declarations, maybe. That hero is given as a class. Mm -hmm. We are only assigned directly. I think outside of it's a component name, maybe. I mean, component name will come in. Our component name is Heroes Component. Component name is Heroes Component implement on in it, then Heroes. Can we put Heroes Component instead of Heroes? I got it. Outside of India on it. Yes. Oh. Yes. So this is happening. Okay. So basically what I have done, this is a more realistic example to your API. Just think about you are receiving your data from the backend API. Okay. And your data is getting validated through this hero model. Now, I am actually collecting this information into my component and I am passing this information to my HTML. Okay, and this is a for loop. So, Angular has two types of directives mainly one is a structural directive, another is a non structural directive. Okay, so this ng for, ng if, ng switch, ng so, so these kinds of directives are by default coming with the Angular. Okay, so simple in the JavaScript switch that is ng switch over here. So, for that is called ng for over here. Okay, so this is just an for loop so that for loop we are collecting these heroes information and we are looping through our hero object into that hero object we are collecting hero dot id and hero name over here and if we are iterating through an ally okay uh, subrat yes. mm -hmm. uh, in that can you go back to the code yes here i observe i observed a for loop in line 7 and there is one more in 13 the structures are completely different in one you have written star ng4 and the other is for so are both certain conventions or we where, can use any where, one of them where is the for this is for this for yes this, this, one's this is a, this is a, this is a label this is a simple html syntax okay. So this is this level has been created for this particular attribute. Okay. So this is a CSS property. So this is okay. not a loop. Okay. So this okay. level is assigned to this text box. That's okay. why they have given this name. Okay. 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 So in this example, we created our array of objects. We iterating through our array of objects. Okay. 
so so far and we have added couple of css into our respective files so we, you can see that <coughs> our into that particular css file uh we have added this particular stuff and we are we didn't add anything into our global style.css global style.css is still empty so one css we have added into that app component and another css we have added into that heroes component so so far no global css is there we are applying css into that respective components only so that respective components will get that data when they will render into the browser okay so i have to stop over here today so do you have any question for me subrata so, can you share us this document so that we can start the practicing yeah definitely definitely i will i will i will share today because i think today onwards you are you get some sort of idea i mean yesterday yeah, i didn't we share we got the some stuff the, so we can do the practice practice okay yeah, yeah. please share this video and, and apart from that apart from that i am tell you telling you best way to learn angular is the angular.io okay. so this angular.io website is everything that you will get okay probably at initial phases it will be little bit tough for you but when you complete this training na then you visit this site you will get lot of information over here so i think today we have done right so you do not have any question khuram has raised thanks yes yes so uh, subrata uh, mm -hmm. yeah so uh, the object the hero object that we were accessing in the html page if mm -hmm. uh, for some reason i need to access that in uh, javascript like maybe there's a javascript uh, function so is that possible for me to do that so first of all first of all you have to see i told you in the first day that typescript is a superset of javascript okay mm -hmm. so if you draw a big circle that big circle is the typescript and inside that big circle we write ecmascript we write javascript we write blah 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 things okay so our main target is uh, whatever gen generally we avoid uh, writing things with the javascript when we deal with the angular but in complicated applications we have to deal with the javascript things like uh, accessing certain dom element or something from the view page okay so these are very rare angular also has certain things to access over there so if you want to go ahead with the angular way you have to uh start using typescript use javascript less at this moment okay 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 then i am actually stopping uh today's so call mm -hmm. just one question yeah uh so uh actually uh, so while we write a code uh, so how the compile process uh, works uh, so uh, it would be good if you can explain something so about angular yeah mm -hmm. in angular we have we are whenever we want to run any application we have to run the ng sub command right mm -hmm. so angular has couple of types of compilation one is just in time compilation so you can see that i made certain changes in the code if the code is buggy automatically application throwing error and application stop executing yeah. once i fix that thing and automatically application get started that is called jit jit just in time compilation yes. Yes. okay apart from that angular has aot compilation and production okay mm -hmm. so uh, there these compilations are basically uh, when we generate builds in angular okay so mm -hmm. when, when we when we generate builds in angular we have uh, normal build command aot build command and production level build command these commands are basically uh, optimize the build size yes okay. yeah so so that is that is the approach so when we are in development phase we will definitely going to use this just in time compilation 
Okay, so uh, what is the exact difference between JIT and uh, another one is AOT, right? AOT build and production build. So production build, what happened? Na? You run the ng build hyphen hyphen prod command. Mm -hmm. So it will give an output into a disk folder. Yes. So the compression level will be high mm -hmm. and the entire code will be much more optimized from the build, build, build perspective. Okay. Okay. And AOT build, what happened that AOT build basically uh, pre compile your entire uh, application, okay, mm -hmm. and it's stored in the memory. Okay. So the same thing, same command runs with ng build hyphen hyphen AOT and ng build hyphen hyphen production, okay. Mm -hmm. So, but production builds we generally use for the production uses, AOT build uh, we generally we, we use rarely but uh, when we use nv engine in our angular application uh, that time uh, we use aot build but uh, that is not for production purposes just to check whether our uh, builds are okay with our uh, what way we are actually handling things this is very less we are using very less in the aot build but in latest angular version they are using aot build in in behind okay so most popular is the just in time build and the production build okay all right so uh, like uh, while our application is created like we demonstrated so it, at the end uh, you will uh, like explain all the things like uh, how to build uh, like production build yeah, yeah 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 this is a okay. one liner one liner command okay Okay. So if I run that command, it will create a disk folder inside your project directory mm -hmm. and it will compile your entire code base mm -hmm. and transform your TS file into a simple HTML, CSS and JavaScript file and push entire code base into that disk folder. So you collect that uh, uh, repository mm -hmm. and put it into your server then you will probably able to see the entire application running into simple html css and javascript mode okay all right because you. browser if you i don't i think you missed yesterday class i mean i info i mentioned that browser doesn't understand typescript ECMAScript. okay yes yes i i listen that but i just want to uh, like uh, Focus on the JIT and AOT, like yeah. uh, what exactly compiles. So that's why. Okay. All right.